It is 12 minutes now before the hour. Welcome District 33 State Representative Ben Robbins to our studio this morning. Ben, good morning, sir. Good morning, Jimmy Dale. Good to have you with us today. And man, you have been busy, haven't you? I, I have. I told someone the other day, I don't think I've been off my phone. So I'm sorry if I owe somebody a phone call. I just literally hadn't been off my phone for about two weeks straight. And you know, Ben's the kind of guy, he gets a lot of calls and stuff. He may not call you back that very second, but he'll, he'll get back with you sooner or later for sure. And uh, let's talk about immigration this morning. And you were in Fayetteville, a lot of anxiousness about immigration, legal and illegal immigration. So what have you found out? Well, I'll preface everything with this statement. Um, I have not physically met every Haitian that lives in Sylacauga. But I can say that the majority, it appears, have come through a, what a program is called the CHVN program, which means Cuban, Haitian, Venezuelan, Nicaraguan. Uh, the Biden administration created a program that, in essence, bypassed the traditional refugee program to allow any Haitian into the country. And so they are given a work permit to work in the country. So they have a legal right to work in this country. Um, I can't say that there might be one that came in under another program or one that might be illegal. I have no earthly idea how all of them are here, but the majority appear to come under the CHVN program and have a work permit to be in this country. What does that entail, that permit? That permit means usually it's for a, a time period. So it's different than a work visa. So this is what I explained in Fayetteville is that the federal government, the Biden administration has created a bit of a word salad. It has caused confusion and it is chaos. When I say that what we are dealing with here now and the, what's happened to our discourse and ability to communicate is chaos. That chaos has flow, flown, it has come downstream from a head of Homeland Security and a federal government that is in utter chaos. And so when the top is in chaos, the bottom is gonna be in chaos as well. So we are just like every other community across this country that's grappling with, well, what does this mean? And then you say, oh, well, it's a work permit. Well, what is a work permit? Well, it's not a work visa. And it's not, you're not a refugee, but you are a refugee. You're a C-11, and what is a C-11? And it's just this word jumble that takes almost a PhD in, uh, immigration to try to understand what's going on and that's why it creates so much confusion but what we do know and this is one that I know that we've got some answers and in that fa that meeting in Fayetteville uh, I think we were able to dispel some rumors uh, I was able to explain that uh, talking with the health department there is no mobile home development coming to Fayetteville and then I know there was rumors that well they weren't going to be mobile homes they were going to be campers with holding tanks you also cannot have a holding tank without a permit. So there is no development that is happening, you know, right now at this time for mobile homes. There is a housing development that is in the works, but that is a housing development that will be for people that can afford nice homes. There will also be College Park built in Childersburg. Also has nothing to do with Haitian immigration. I've talked with both developers. They have no that they are not building it under the direction of the federal government. They're not building it for mobile homes. So that is not going to happen in Fayetteville. Um, and I know someone mentioned land clearing in Coosa County. Um, I'm following all that up with the state of Alabama. But again, the health department from Coosa County has no permit request and no permits issued. So I think that is a rumor that somehow just spread. And what's interesting is that rumor seems to be happening everywhere the Haitian immigrants are. Uh, I talked to the representative in Russellville. He's dealing with the same issue where they can't find any record of a mobile home park. And he's checked with his congressman just like I have, and there are no FEMA trailers that have been ordered. So I don't know if it somehow has popped up here and popped up there, and it just kind of happen, but I, I can tell you there will be no mobile home park in Fayetteville. Any idea of the number of uh, immigrants, Haitian immigrants or Nicaraguan immigrants in this area? I, I, can't, I can't speak to that. I do not know an exact number, and I, I am unaware or unfamiliar with um, a, 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 you know, kind of the exact number. But what I, what I can say is that because of us not knowing the exact number and because of what I talked about, the chaos, you know, it creates so many questions mm -hmm. and so many unknown answers and so many of them flow are from the federal government. 
And I think people around here are, are kind of tired of hearing, well, it's the federal government's fault. Um, and it is, but what I said in Fayetteville and what I'm going to double down on going further with is that the federal government just punched us in the face. Federal government just said, we have no structure, no order, we don't know who's coming, we don't know where they are, we don't even know they're in your community, and we just got hit in the face. Every local leader from, and when I say local leader, I mean any person that represents the state of Alabama from Tommy Tuberville, Katie Britt, all the way down to a city council everywhere in the state got punched in the face. So we got knocked down and we started asking questions to get back up, but what I'm gonna propose is that the state of Alabama will punch back and we will punch back hard against the federal government. What we will do, and I'm proposing in legislation, will be that we will create the most robust tracking system of immigrants in the nation. Yes, federal government does control immigration, but what the state can control is that we control and regulate business. So if you are a business and you hire a C-11 employee, mm -hmm. you must report that to the Department of Labor. What that will do is that will give us two key pieces of information. It will tell us, one, where a Nicaraguan or a Venezuelan or a Cuban or a Haitian are working. It will give us an address. We will now know who is in our state, how many, and where they are. The second piece of information that will give us is it will tell us, hopefully, who that person's sponsor is. Because to come under the CHVN program, you must have a sponsor. When I talk to the Haitians that are here, they have no idea who their sponsor is. So what we are dealing with is a federal government that has allowed sponsors, which are typically non-government organizations, to profit outrageous amounts of money and not provide the services that they promised the government they would provide. And so what we will then do is any services in terms of housing, health care, education that those sponsors were supposed to provide, we will invoice those sponsors and say, you owe us, Silicaga, state of Alabama, X number of dollars because C11 employee 1234, we had to put the bill on and you were supposed to do it. So now you owe us. And I think what that will do is definitely try to make us whole. But on the other side, what it will do is it will tell the federal government, you cannot just push the state of Alabama around. There's been many uh, conversations uh, about how these people got here, uh, who's paying them, uh, what did they get from the federal government uh, as far as, can you speak to that? I mean, I can speak a little bit. I, I, what we've been able to learn is that Every, every pocket in the state is slightly different of, of, of anybody that entered through the CHVN program. Some parts, they were brought directly for jobs, where as in one large employer just said, hey, I need 50 employees, and a staffing agency goes out there and mm -hmm. finds them. Like Our, a temp force or right. something like that? And see, I think that what we in the state of Alabama also need to do is we need to address what's going on with our staffing agencies. Our staffing agencies are moving people from point A to point B and they're moving people into communities that do not speak the language and putting a burden, a burden on those communities. Well, the staffing agencies aren't footing the bill for the burden they're putting on the taxpayers. And we have to seriously look at how are they getting these referrals and we need to cut any kind, we need to eliminate and ban any kickbacks that staffing agencies pay to labor brokers, which are finding cheap labor in foreign countries and dumping them on our soil. Because what we're dealing with here is a pyramid scheme. And what we're dealing with is that it is human bodies that is the pyramid scheme and the product. And we can't allow that to happen in the state of Alabama. And so we're gonna have to do something to address that. And because of that, it makes it very difficult to understand how every single individual got here because some were sent through a labor broker, a staffing agency. Some just came on their own volition. Some we still just don't know and we'll never know, but we've got to figure out a way to start tracking them. You sent a letter and I saw the letter, very pointed. Did you get response from that? I got no response and in fact, I. Uh, uh, at this point, I'm not sure that I will get a response, and I was glad to see that Senator Tuberville sent a letter to uh, uh, Mayorkas, and I just saw yesterday our Lieutenant Governor Will Ainsworth did. And both of their letters were slightly different. Ainsworth's letter yesterday dealt solely about the CHVN program and that it must be stopped, because 
not only must this program be completely stopped, what it's done is it's been unfair to the immigrant themselves. I mean, lost in this entire conversation is the human being and the human element that what's happened is these people are being promised something that isn't happening. And they're coming out of a country that we can't imagine the carnage that they are living in. And they are expecting something and promised something by these labor brokers to come here because yep. they want the numbers and they want the money for sponsoring more and more and more. And then they get here and they're sold the bag of goods and then the sponsors are just dumping them out on the streets to be homeless. And it is unconscionable what is happening to these immigrants. And we always have to remember that. But at the same time, we have to also say that our immigration policy is ineffective and it is causing harm not just to them but to our community. And then how do we address that harm that's happened, which I think is invoicing and billing the sponsors and making them pay what they agreed to pay, while also dealing with the human element and the humanitarian crisis across the country that the federal government's created. Uh, I've had the privilege of, of being in Haiti twice and it's horrific there. It hadn't changed since the years I've been there either, and uh, except for worse. And in Port-au-Prince, uh, the capital of Haiti, is, is carnage everywhere. And, and you go into the markets there, and they've got open-air markets with animals that they're selling for people to, to eat, they buy and eat. That's, that's a way of life for the Haitian people there. So they come here, and all of a sudden, I got a call yesterday from a guy in Ohio. He said, they're not eating cats and dogs, the Haitian people in Ohio. And I'm thinking to myself, well, that's what they did in their country. Right, I mean, I, I cannot, I, I, I will not make any kind of comment on what they are or not doing in yeah. Ohio. But what I will say is, what you, what you said, they have come from utter carnage, and they are human beings. And all of us are born, you know, with, with the dignity and grace of God. And we must always remember that they are our fellow human beings. Mm -hmm. And when you communicate and talk about someone, you talk about them as a human. And we cannot lose that in anything that we do. Our hatred or our anger is directed at the federal government. It's directed at those that allowed people to be mistreated. And it allowed our community to be mistreated. But those are still people, and, and yes, they might live differently than we do, but you know, people in Michigan live differently than sure. we do, but not quite to that extreme, but, but we have to always remember that there are people that are suffering. Now, we have a meeting scheduled here in Sylacauga next week at First Baptist Church, and uh, you're scheduled to be there. And, and there's just a lot of frayed nerves right now, and, and a lot of people on edge, and we don't know, you know, where you are is, is limited in what you know. Right, it is limited in what we know, but what I can say is that at the meeting, I'll go into more detail but I just want everyone to be aware that we are going to punch back and we are going to tell the federal government Alabama will not be a punching bag and will not just bend our knee to whatever policy you want to thrust upon us. So even if we don't ever get all of the answers, we will take action and we will not sit back idly. You've talked with people here locally uh, in Fayetteville, it was, it was a packed house, and, and I'm sure it'll be full at First Baptist Church, and, and uh, you know, we're not used to this kind of thing in our communities. Well, we're not. I mean, the meeting in Fayetteville um, and the meeting at First Baptist, I'll say, and, and there'll be another town hall meeting after that, that I'll be there as long as everybody wants to be there. If they want to be there till midnight asking questions, I'll be there. Uh, if they only want to ask one question and be done, I'll stand around and wait. But um, any person that has a question, I will answer it. And I will answer it to the best of my ability. Um, that means that sometimes I will not know the answer, but I will say, I don't know the answer, I'll try to find it. Or, we will never know that answer, but here will be our response. Because I think that what is going to be important is not just pointing fingers and running in circles, but it will be our response. 
And it'll be our response to the questions that we can find answers to. And it will be our response to even those unknowns. And I think that what people want is answers, but they want us to, sh they want people, they want us, they want to know that we have their back and we are going to go mm -hmm. fight for them. And that's what I promise you we will do. And Alabama, again, like I said, we will not let the federal government dictate to us what we have to do in every part of our lives. Governor Ivey with the same type feelings, you think? I, I believe so. I've had conversations with Governor Ivey, with uh, our senators, our congressmen, their staffs on a regular basis, um, I, I, and, and with our attorney general. Um, I think that you're going to see a, a very strong, very coordinated approach on how we address this issue. Um, I, I think that everyone wanted a quick response of some kind, but like I said, we, we got, you know, we got knocked down. You got to get yourself up before you can figure out how you're going to punch back. In communities like ours, obviously there's, there's the language barrier that, that we're grappling with as well. Right. It's a big language barrier. And it's why I said in the letter you, you referenced, it's, it is it, in the big picture. Our community is upset because we had no notice that immigrants were coming into our community. But the federal government giving someone a work permit due to the Interstate Commerce Clause allows an individual to travel freely throughout this country. But what we were really upset about is just this idea that no one told us and we had no notice. So with no notice, and then you have a community that cannot speak the language, how is it fair to the community or to the immigrant? How is that immigrant supposed to ever really improve themselves if they are, are over an hour away from any other Creole speaking social worker, case manager, healthcare provider that can speak their language? You have isolated people in a place where they cannot grow and fulfill the American dream. And then you have put a community on edge because of the chaos that you've created that has just gone downstream to us. So it is just a toxic mix, but it is a mix that we need to say, it is here, we need to come together and we need to fight back together and not let this divide us or tear us apart because this is a great community. It is a great community. I would understand why anyone would want to move here. It's great, it has opportunity, it is a beautiful scenery, it is a place where you can raise a family or you can grow old. So any person that wants to move here, I understand why they would, but we cannot let the chaos of the federal government tear us apart. And that is what they want and we are playing into their hands at times. So we need to sit back and we need to come together. And I hope we can do that at the meeting and all leave on the same page as we don't know some of these answers and we might not ever know them, but we are prepared and we are willing to punch back and punch back as hard as we can. And you're adamant about your stance. Oh, I'm very adamant. I'm very adamant that we, there are several issues here that this has uncovered in just the ineptitude of the federal government, the greed of some individuals and companies that have brought these people here just for pure greed. And that we need to go and we need to go after those people that have hurt the immigrant and hurt communities over their pure greed. And that what we need to do is we need to be able to track them. We need to know who they are, where they are, and the federal government's not going to do that for us, so we have to figure out how to do it. And we also need to address issues with our property owners across the state, because I believe that there are landowners that fully well know what is going on in their homes that they are renting, but they turn a blind eye. And we are going to start making you culpable uh, for human trafficking, prostitution, and drugs for what you are doing and allowing to happen in your homes. And if we do those things, we will stop, one, this flow that we cannot control into the state of Alabama, and two, we will be reimbursed, hopefully, for the cost that we have entailed. In, in your district, which is uh, Coosa and Talladega counties, do you see this happening in our, in our district? I see that we do have immigrants here. We do have, we do have a uh, fresh, you know, new immigrants to this country here. So yes, it is happening here. Is it happening? We, we don't even have the most uh, CHVN uh, enrollees in the state. Those are, that's, you know, in North, North Alabama, in Marshall County, in Athens, they have more than we have. But because, again, of the chaos, it is causing us to divide ourselves. 
and dividing ourselves and fighting amongst ourselves makes us weaker. It makes us less attractive to growth. What we have to do is we really do have to come together. We really do have to come to solutions and we do have to see the greater picture and not divide ourselves. So this meeting coming up Tuesday, September 24, 6 o'clock, First Baptist Church in Sylacauga, uh, discussion, uh, public discussion on immigration laws and community concerns. And you, you've seen the videos, it's gone viral about this one or that one. And, and even in our city council meetings here in Sylacauga, it, it's kind of given us an undeserved black eye. It, it, it has. Uh, but, you know, I'm not going to speak really on what's happened with the city council. I'm not on the city council, but what I can say is that the answers that you're seeking, we're doing everything we can to find, and then we are, we are coming up with plans on how to respond. And part of that, what you talked about, is why, you know, the town hall in Fayetteville, it, it wasn't live streamed or recorded. I think the last thing people wanted was Fayette, a, a church in Fayetteville to go viral for what someone said or, or did within the church. I don't think there's any media uh, allowed in the building, was there? Well, the Daily Home was there the whole time. He was jotting down notes, but I think they didn't want, I think, you know, it was kind of a decided thing that, well, we don't want that to get a black eye and people say, yeah. well, look what goes on in churches down there. <laughs> and, you know, you know, because you can't control if someone stands up sure. and asks a question and then says some things yeah. they might not should have said. but. That doesn't mean that we still won't stand there with you and answer everything that you want. And even if you weren't, couldn't come to the meeting or you come to the ones in Sylacauga, I'm always available. And I said, I'm sorry, I am a little behind on returning my calls because I've just gotten so many. I, I showed my wife that I was in a meeting for an hour and 15 minutes and came out and had 33 missed calls. So <laughs> I am running a little behind, but that doesn't mean I'm not going to get to you. Right, ben, thanks for coming by this morning. I know right. you're busy, but uh, we look forward to being with you guys on Tuesday, September 24th, First Baptist Church in Sylacauga. And, uh, uh, you know, people can call your office and uh, said uh, he'll, he'll get back with you if he doesn't talk to you immediately. And we appreciate uh, you and Senator Kelly and Senator Bell for uh, being a part of the meeting coming up Tuesday here in Sylacauga First Baptist. Ben, always a pleasure, sir. Uh, thank you so much for having me. More Daybreak coming up right after this.